Welcome to the Eco Iki campaign in Shogun 2 with the Master of Strategy mod. Our faction's actually called Hongenji, by the way, but I'll be saying Eco Iki in this campaign for clarity. Now, while this is part 1, there is a part 0 to this campaign where I already tried to play it and failed, and we're going to be using some lessons learnt there to predict what's going to happen as this thing gets started. We begin with our territory split between three different areas and most of our troops are in the southwesternmost area near Osaka. Here's the most difficult area, we've got two territories right next to each other with low level castles and not many troops to defend them. Plus, because we're the Ikoiki, the fact that we're bordering other factions on both sides means we're probably going to be attacked and we did see in the part zero version of this campaign that loads of armies came from the east and just steamrolled this area. With that in mind, we're not going to be paying too close attention to this zone. We'll come back to it and work out what we're going to do there with the likely knowledge that the area is going to fall. But for now, I'm going to make my opening move with our starting units, which as I said are mostly concentrated around Osaka. We've got a few samurai and a few generic trash units under our faction leader. The plan is to attack the faction right next to us, the Besho. And in my part zero experiment, I discovered that this is certainly a doable fight for us. This time, I'm being even more aggressive than I was in my initial attempt. I'm just going to attack on turn one and see what happens. As it happens, this one general standing here was reinforced by a few units, but that didn't make much difference. We easily ought to resolve him out of the way, giving us access to the enemy's territory. Moving forwards, we can see that the enemy starting units are here as well. And as an interesting note, in Master of Strategy, this mod, all the factions appear to start with the same army. So the stuff they have there is the same stuff I have right here, only denied a few units because of that auto resolve we just did. So we're a bit stronger. What I wanted to do was capture the castle, but that army was actually in reinforcement range. I did think it wasn't, I guess I just didn't even check. That's probably what happened there. However, even with them coming in to reinforce, we can still take this fight because the reinforcements will be far from the castle. We can essentially do this as two battles. We'll fight their army in the field and then attack the castle. This makes things easier than they look because while the enemy have some strength on that balance bar, a lot of their stuff's sitting there watching the fight from the castle. So far away, our entire force sets up to intercept their reinforcements and gradually they come over towards us. They essentially have the same army as us, but a bit smaller, so we certainly have the advantage here. Plus, we're going to get the first shots on the skirmishing since we're standing still. The enemy aren't going to bother skirmishing though, they just run right at us. Seeing that, I run my spears forward right away just before their cav charges into our archer and gun line. Now then, a huge brawl will break out as the melee infantry from both sides just clash, and with it being mostly the same stuff, there's no particular advantage here, although having the enemy's cab in amongst this will help because we're fighting primarily with spearmen. Meanwhile, our cav are being put to use on a much better project. They're coming around to destroy the enemy's ranged infantry. That's going to be nice and easy, especially against juicy units like Gun Ashigaru, our heavy cav will annihilate them. There's the blood spatter that I still haven't remembered to mod out of the game, but that will be coming soon. Anyway, now everything is engaged and we just try to win. I can spam the buffs from the general, the rallies and the inspires to slightly increase our stats, and we hope the enemy leave. I think their general probably died somewhere in this fight because we do actually see them rout quite quickly. Because they're reinforcements, I don't think the game tells you when the general dies, especially not in the replay when it tends not to tell you even at the best of times. Anyway, as you can see, it seems their morale did break, we had them surrounded, and we got them pounded, and now that entire army is going to be destroyed. They'll try and flee, but they're already sort of surrounded, and with our cav, we can easily chase them down and absolutely delete that army. With that done, I'm switching back to the live footage because I couldn't be bothered to film the replay for this. Basically, I did the very slow, very safe castle assault strategy, gradually picking off enemies on the wall, using my archers in places where the enemy archers can't see me and things like that to pick up some kills before we attack to make it as easy as possible. It takes a real long time and takes a surprising amount of micro, but it gets there eventually. And in this map in particular, or on this map, the towers on the castle only shoot inwards, so it's safe to stand even right below the enemy's towers. They don't kill you over time. What does kill you, as it turns out, is climbing up the wall. I knew it did kill you, but I didn't realize it killed you quite this much. Maybe I'm misremembering it, or maybe it's something to do with the mod. But basically, when I sent units over the wall right at the end, 
We took extreme casualties on the units making those climbs, so that was pretty nasty. It wouldn't be so bad if I hadn't ordered loads of units to go in for no particular reason. We just need the guys who are capturing the central point right now. The rest of the guys are climbing in and dying, which is not accomplishing anything. And in the end, about a third of our total losses in that battle were from the climbing, I presume anyway, comparing our losses to the enemy's kill stats. And this is a problem because in this mod, you replenish very slowly. So taking losses in battles that you don't need is a big deal in the short term. Eventually you'll get the men back, but we're going to be fighting well before then. You can see there are two Besho generals standing around to the east. They are not going to be of any trouble to us, but there is a castle to the west. That's what we want to focus on. Ideally, we want to move out right away, but there's no movement points left, so we might as well stay here this turn. By the next turn, those two generals have tried to get back to their castle. We can easily move out and kill this one here with this small group. We're going to have to be dealing in this campaign with the fact that the Ikoiki have public order problems all over the place due to having a different religion to everyone else. So I do need to leave troops behind as we go on to attack the next special location, thinning out our army a little bit, but I can use exemption from tax to make that not so bad. I engage the other general and another army comes into fight, some units in the castle are reinforcing. Basically we ought to resolve them to death, then took a step forward and ought to resolve again at the castle. This meant we had to fight their daimyo twice because he respawned in between the auto resolves. But by the end of all that, all the remaining Besho troops are dead, and their castle is ours, their faction is destroyed. All good stuff. However, this little bit of the war isn't over yet, because they were actually the vassal of the faction that owned the next castle down the road, so we need to keep going from here. I tried to find this castle, I knew it was there from playing previously, but it's hard to find and your line of sight is about as much as your zone of control, so if you just walk into it you get stuck in the castle zone of control. That's why here I'm not going to bother finding it with my decent cav, and in the next turn I instead sent out some trash militia to go find the castle instead. It's not indicated on the map by the way, the papery version of the map because one of the major changes of Master of Strategy is to totally change up where the castles are and how many castles there are. So yes, we do find Himeji Castle here. We're now in the zone of control, so we have to besiege it, and this reveals to us the location of the enemy's main army. We knew that they had an army similar to mine, because every faction does, and now we know it must be behind this castle. We can't actually see it, but it's in reinforcement range, so it's just there. This is difficult for us to overcome because we have that stuff but less in our attack group. We can flesh it out with a bunch of levied spears, but in this mod there are very strict unit caps and already, before we have a full stack to attack, we've hit the unit cap. So we've got our starting samurai and a bunch of trash spearmen, and that's all we can have for now. We need to capture a lot more territory and develop our buildings to get some more unit cap unlocked, and that is going to take a while. Now there are also lots of new trade nodes in this mod, and I was eager to go capture this close by one at Shikoku. However, after taking it, it seems it actually costs me more to occupy this node than I make from the node, so that's a bit different to the base game. This might be because I'm not trading with many people, due to all of the other factions just hating me as the Iko Iki. However, having the iron the trade node gives you is still potentially useful because certain buildings require iron and certain units might as well, so this could unlock something for us if we can continue to hold that place down. I thought I'd add here that here on the Master of Strategy tech tree, which is quite different to the vanilla tech tree, I don't have any real strategy and I'm not really going to commentate on what techs I'm getting. Basically, I should progress through the game in some way in terms of the tech. And I'll let you know when we've unlocked some new interesting things to use. For now, you need techs to unlock even the most basic buildings, so I'm going to be focusing on some of those, and grabbing the early tech that increase things like movement range and replenishment, which are always vital at all points in the campaign. If you were wondering what happened to my Naginetta militia who were doing the scouting, well, nothing good. The enemy came out of the castle, uniting all of their troops together into a big stack, and down go the scouts. But more importantly, the enemy do move towards us, and that's just what we need to get them away from that castle and its garrison. However, the wars elsewhere are about to start. Here are the Asakura declaring war on us. They are the faction to the south of our little northern set of territories. So they are bordering us and they are going to be in trouble. 
Here's a little look at the diplomatic map. You can see all the red is the bit that doesn't like us, so everything really. And of course that only gets worse because the more territories you take, the more debuffed your diplomatic relations get. Meaning we're going to struggle in this campaign to have allies and good relations with anyone. We do actually start allied to the Hatakiyama here. And right now I'm organizing some military access with them for a very certain reason. They have a territory right here to the north of my little pair up here. That means I can retreat away from the Asakura to the south with my two generals. I was hoping to keep the two generals alive. By essentially hiding them in this territory here, the enemy won't be able to attack them unless they also declare war on the Hatakiyama, which they haven't done so far. This does mean our two territories are effectively being abandoned. I've got nothing built here, and all I've got are the starting units of Ashigaru. I thought I would set up in the castle to defend. Then I thought, let's try and attack this one general and see what's up with that. And what's up with that is, it is just a general standing on our border. So actually, we kill that general. That's a great start to the war. I figured there'd be a full stack behind it or a castle behind it or something. But no. Then I see a building we can raid. So I go on and do that as well, just to annoy the enemy. This gives us line of sight on the castle, and actually it's not very heavily defended, and I started thinking, maybe we can actually do something here, we can't do it this turn. And then, after I take one more step, hello, there's a full stack standing right here. So that's the thing I was expecting, and that's the thing that will be wiping us out soon enough. So we need to focus on our main army and its project, because this situation is tenable for us. I have recruited a monk at our new capture. I can use that monk to slightly increase public order back at the first Besho castle, allowing me to bring over one extra unit to help out with this potential siege defense. I can also put the cav outside so they can rush in as reinforcements to help from outside the walls. And that gives me more slots in the army to use for garrison units spawning for free. So all that maximizes our strength there. I'm also going to disband the units that started the game at Negishima Castle, that will allow me to re-recruit them over with my main army basically, that's the thinking. So Nagashima is to some extent being abandoned here as well, even though it is our best castle, it's just absolutely surrounded by other castles and someone's probably going to take it soon enough, so we can't really reliably hold it. Especially with the Oda, who start off the game as quite a big faction because we aren't starting at the usual date. They're probably going to be trouble for us. Looks like things are going well though with the Akametsu. They come and attack the castle, not going around to attack my reinforcements or any shenanigans like that. So it's a siege defense where we're fighting pretty much the same thing that we have, but we have a bit more because we have a garrison helping out as well. And of course we have walls. So overall, this is the perfect chance to gain the advantage we need. We're on the same map we saw earlier, so that makes things simple enough. As for our strategy, well, it's a bad day to be an Ashigaru, or a militia in fact I should say. Most of our troops are the tier below Ashigaru, and their job is to be a distraction outside the castle. So they're setting up to stop the enemy, we'll get a fight going outside the walls, then our guns and archers will try to defeat the enemy. That's the plan, and here it is getting started. In particular, they're charging at us with these katana samurai, nice and vulnerable to gunfire. Our gunners are only the Ashigaru gunners, so they're probably too inaccurate to do devastating damage, but that's a good engagement all the same. Now our reinforcements coming in, our challenge, they do send some Katana Cav to stop us, and our general takes the brunt of that charge. I didn't mind too much though, because I have my own unit of Katana Cav who can come in to flank attack, and some Naginata militia are on the way as well. So in all, we're going to have the advantage, but we are putting our general at risk. Now the main strategy begins. The enemy charge in and we receive them into these melees. The slope of the hill makes things a bit awkward in terms of the line of sight, but broadly speaking, we should now be able to hit the enemy with bullets and with arrows and gradually kill them. They of course will be killing us because they have numbers on their side in this melee, in particular here at the western hill where like 10 units at a time charged in against our couple of units of Ashigaru. And you can see how the line of sight isn't that good here really. It's pretty easy for them to shoot our men, and hard for our archers to shoot the enemy. We needed the fight to happen closer to the walls, ideally. Of course, playing in real time, I didn't pay that close attention to such things. 
At the Northern Wall we've got another fight going, but here it's not so good, they've got some veteran Ashigaru against our militia and they've got Gun Samurai coming in, so here they might be able to actually clear us out quite easily. I sent some of my other militia to reinforce, meanwhile the guys already engaged, well it's just an absolute bloodbath as both sides annihilate each other and we just hope that we're annihilating them a bit more than they're annihilating us which should be the case with our guns mostly hitting the enemy although of course the accuracy isn't high enough to guarantee anything there we have stopped several units though and i'm stopping to admire the carnage bodies all over the place and broadly speaking shogun 2 for some reason just looks really good it looks better than the games that came after it like rome 2 for example both in terms of the animation quality and just the graphical quality i think the way it presented lighting is just better in some way and they gave up on that at some point anyway the job is being done, especially right here where the enemy's flank are facing my guns now. That's probably going to be much less friendly fire tastic. Back over at the northern wall, we are less close to victory, but throwing in some extra militia units has stabilized things. And I've got their gun samurai into melee so they're not shooting us. Although, they are going to easily win that melee as a samurai unit taking on our militia. Their general stats will be too high for us. Their general came over here as well and got engaged with our spears, an engagement that should favour us, he gives up wisely. And as for the gun samurai, well I basically moved the fight to be a bit closer to the wall, so here we are fighting them again with militia. Still a bad fight, but arrows are now sneaking down into the engagement. And although the samurai are armoured, giving them a decent armour save against arrows, sometimes it kills them, and that will thin them out. Looks like we're starting to win this one, the balance bar looks good, and at this stage the main fight is our spearmen fighting the enemy's archers and boom they are not enjoying this they start to rout our reinforcements have defeated the enemy's katana cab and have arrived as well so we've got a few horsemen on the scene on our side that hillside absolutely covered in bodies now we need to make this battle count by chasing down all these routing archer units and absolutely annihilating them to make sure the enemy army is finished off soon we get to this result the enemy lost absolutely everything down to the last man we lost over a thousand men ourselves, including one full unit, and it is going to take a long time to get those troops back. So we're in a weakened state, but we still have stuff alive. We probably have enough to take their castle. However, after their army dies, they immediately offer me peace. Looks like the AI is really on the ball in this game. I feel like the later Total War AI wouldn't have remembered to do this. But yes, they're going to try and not allow us to kill them. We can offer them vassalship and they would be willing to accept that. So this is an interesting question. We almost certainly can conquer them at this point, but it's easier to make them our vassal. It also increases our leader's honor, giving us a public order advantage. The downside is we don't have their castle. They had a good castle, and it's a nice strategic point to defend. However, as you can see, I do go with the vassalship deal. So they will now have to act as a buffer blocking the main western road between all of the other factions and our new bit of territory. We'll see how that goes. In the meantime, looks like the Asakura are on the move, so now our territories up there are going to be in big trouble. First, the army that moved out is annihilated, as you might expect, and these guys are going to go on to attack the castle. The castle now only has its garrison, so that's going downtown. I almost fought this one to see if we could kill a full unit or something, but there's no point at this stage. There's no way we're going to strike back against the Asakura anytime soon. So I just let them take both of my castles in the same turn. <laughs> Thus, all the gains we've made so far are wiped out just like that. Although now, all the territories we have but one are together. So our strategic situation has improved over the course of this part, I would say. Our main force now doesn't need to keep going in that direction, so... I thought we might as well start going backwards again. We can do it in terms of not fighting to get some troops back, although it's going to take so many turns, it's almost not really worth waiting around to get new troops. I could just disband and re-recruit the units. We are going to have to distribute our units among our castles to control public order, especially if we ever want to actually tax them and get some cash off them. But it's not very good form to do nothing in Total War games. Doing nothing generally means the AI is gaining an advantage on you. So I did want to attack somebody, and I had my eye on the Hatano. They've only got one region, they've got no allies, and they border us. So they're a perfect enemy. I started moving out to go deal with them. As for our two generals, who are now trapped up in the Hatagiyama's territory in Noto, 
well I've got this new trade ship that's going to sail all the way around the map to gradually go and pick them up. I've got enough military access turns for them to wait it out and our ship should arrive in time. So I'm going to sit them in this forest in a hidden position, hopefully no one will bother them and we can get these two generals back and add them to our army and use them for stuff. And if they don't make it, well, they were going to die up there anyway, so we're not going to lose anything. Now really annoyingly, the Ashikaga Shogunate go and conquer the Hetano in that turn. That's annoying. Then my vassal gets conquered by the Amoko. That's even more annoying. So that didn't last very long, did it? Now we once again have a potentially hostile faction on our border, although not at war with us right now. I started preparing the troops to go west thinking, well, maybe I should just declare war on the Amoko and go for Hemeji Castle now. However, the Amoko look relatively strong and they have a bunch of allies, so declaring war on them is no small thing, especially because they have the Shogunate on their side, who are also my ally for some reason, and if they ended up at war with us, that would be a very dangerous neighbour. With that in mind, I thought instead I'll start bringing the main force back to our core territory because we are surrounded by some other factions, and really they could declare war on us at any second, so I thought we'd best go back, if only to actually get to Osaka, because there I've built the building that lets you recruit regular Ashigaru, so I can start replacing some of my militia units with slightly superior ones, and this delay should allow me to refill some units as well. So I spent a couple of turns hanging around here, and next we're moving ahead a couple of turns to the next thing I did, which was to start moving towards the Ashikaga Shogunate. I had worked out by this point what I wanted to do. Had to leave more stuff behind because of this unrest thing. I mentioned this in my part zero video and I still don't really know how this works. I've actually got a sub mod to try and make unrest less of a big deal, but basically Osaka's going to lose all of its religion and almost certainly rebel because of this unrest factor that's gradually increasing and I can't tell right now what's increasing it or what I can do to stop it increasing. So we're going to have to just keep making militia units and having them sit there, which will have a big impact on our armies because it's using up a lot of our unit cap doing all this public order management. Now my plan right now is to go sit in the Ashikaga Shogunate's territory. Seems pretty provocative, but I do have military access with them. The plan is to walk through their lands to go eastwards because the clan next to them, the Rukaku, are at war with someone I started the game allied to, the Suzuki to the south, who are also an Iko Iki faction. So I can use them to join a war against the Rukaku. And now the plan is I can take at least one castle with this army and see what happens, and if I can, break through to Nagashima and actually link up this little area, create a group of allied territories next to each other, which will be slightly disconnected from our main blob, but not all that badly. That's the plan then. I had high hopes, but in the end turn sequence, things start to go wrong. First, that wasn't the thing going wrong there. The Asakura tried to stop my ship, but failed. However, then my two guys up in the forest of the Hatakiyama disappeared. And you may know what that means. It means my military access has been revoked, causing them to teleport away. Not so bad, but it means they teleport to the nearest point, which, which is Nagashima, not ideal for us. The worst thing though is that the Ashikaga Shogunate also revokes their access, so now I can't move through their lands to attack the Rukaku. However, the Rukaku can attack me at Nagashima. I tried to re-get military access but failed, meaning these two generals, while now back a bit closer to our core territory, are still stuck here and this area is now more likely to be attacked than it was before. So this actually isn't of great use to us overall, the plan has failed. Plus our main force is now floundering again with nothing to do, it's just costing us money. I just kind of moved it back towards that castle and sat it there because I didn't really know where to go from here with the main force, although the game will soon give me an opportunity as you'll see. First though, we need things to get a little bit worse because they were going too well. The Oda declared war on us, the thing I feared happening all along and they finally actually did it. So now Nagashima is in enormous trouble because they're a big faction right next to us and indeed they have a full stack that gets thrown at the castle immediately, although it doesn't quite make it so now they have to sit out there in the winter taking attrition. As for the main force, the opening that appeared was one of the Amako's enemies, or their only enemy I should say, captured Himeji Castle from them. So now I can potentially declare war on that slightly weaker faction and get Himeji Castle for myself and perhaps something else that they hold nearby. 
and they're just a juicier target than the Amoko because they're not allied into a bunch of other factions. So that's the plan with the main force, we'll start moving that way to see if anything comes of that. First though, the Oda army does attack at Nagashima with a load of Ashigaru. It looks bad, but we do have a unique castle here because it's a historical location that gets buffed out by the mod, and we have some good garrison units as a result. So, not the worst situation to make a last stand if anything, so we'll see what happens next time.